Hello everyone. This video is about capacitors. A capacitor is an electrolytic device that stores electrical energy or load in an electric field. It's like a water tank that's used for storing water. For the times we need water. There are different types of capacitors, but all of them are made of two conductive sheets, and there is an insulator between them. That prevents these two sheets from being shorted to each other. The sheet is usually metallic or electrolytic, and the insulator is ceramic, water, glass, plastic. The main difference of capacitors is how the sheets are placed and material of the insulator. Capacitors play different roles on circuits. Their most important role is to stabilize voltage. As you know, in power supplies, AC voltage passes through input filters and diode bridge. And it gets converted into DC voltage with a high ripple. Voltage ripple gets removed by this filter capacitor. And that causes DC voltage to enter power supply. Sometimes capacitors are used as filters as well. Because as you know, they easily let alternating signals pass through them. But they don't let DC signals pass through. As you know, capacitors have two pins. Some of them are non-polarized. Most of these capacitors are non-polarized. But some have polarity, they are marked with plus N. And you shouldn't place them reversely on boards. So those were some information about capacitors. Now I'll talk about their specifications, which are written on most of them. They have two specifications. First one is capacity that's specified in ferrets. This one is 3300 microfarad. So 3300 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 farad. Farad is a high capacity. Therefore capacitors are specified in microfarad, nanofarad, picofarad and millifarad. Millifarad is 10 to the power of minus 3 and it's a high capacity capacitor. Then there is microfarad which is 10 to the power of minus 6. Then nanofarad is 10 to the power of minus 9. And the last one is picofarad which is 10 to the power of minus 12 farad. The next important specification besides capacity is voltage. Working voltage of capacitors are usually written on them. That is 6.3 volt on this one. This means you can use it on a block that's under 6.3 volt. But you can't use it for higher than 6.3 volt. For example, you shouldn't use this capacitor for CPU power block that's 12 volt. And you need to use a 16 volt capacitor or on 5 volt power block that enters motherboard. You can use 6.3 volt capacitor. And if you didn't have a 6.3 volt capacitor, you can use a 10 volt capacitor on 5 volt direction. There are different types of capacitors which all talk about them. The first one that I'm going to check is ceramic capacitors. They are non-polarized so you can place them on circuits as you wish. Because they don't have positive and negative poles. As they are made of ceramic. And it has high dielectric. That makes ceramic capacitors to have high capacity in same sizes. 
and their working voltage to be also high. For example, 103 is written on this capacitor, which is its capacity, and 2 kilovolt is its working voltage. The biggest disadvantage of capacitors is their dependence to environment temperature. Their capacity changes when temperature changes. The next capacitor is electrolytic capacitor. These capacitors are polarized unlike ceramic ones. You can see them here. Their negative pole is marked with, is also marked on boards. So you need to consider the polarity on these capacitors. And you shouldn't place them reversely on circuits. The next one is tantalum capacitor. Tantalum metal is used in them. And as dielectric of tantalum oxide is three times more than aluminum oxide. So that makes tantalum capacitors of the same size with aluminum ones to have more capacity. Tantalum ones are also more expensive than electrolytic ones. The capacitors with pins are called deep and the ones without pins are called SMD. Positive pole of deep capacitors is marked. And positive pole of SMD ones is marked with a line. Unlike electrolytic ones that have a mark on their negative pole, positive pole of tantalum ones are marked. The next capacitor is plastic ones, which include MKP and polyester. Thin plastic sheets are used in them as dielectric. These types of capacitors are mostly used these days, you can see them on circuits, because they're not sensitive to temperature change. And they're used wherever capacitor capacity shouldn't be sensitive to temperature. Another type of plastic capacitor is made of polystyrene dielectric and it's known as polyester capacitor. You can see them on this power block. MKP capacitors get charged and discharged sooner than polyester ones. That's why they're used on inputs to reduce noise because they can reduce them sooner. Compared to polyester capacitors, there is another type of capacitor that's called variable capacitor. Their capacity can change in three ways. The first way is to change their dielectric type and that causes their capacity to change, or change the material of their sheets, or change the distance between the sheets. You can find two types of these capacitors on the market. The ones that their capacity changes with a knob are called variable capacitors. And a smaller type that their capacity can change with a screwdriver is called trimmer. Capacity of variable capacitors is between 10 and 500 picofarad, and capacity of trimmer capacitors is 5 to hundreds of picofarad, and they're used in radio and telecommunication receivers for adjusting frequency. The next thing I need to say is the reaction of capacitors towards AC and DC voltages. They let AC voltage pass through them. But for the DC voltage, they disconnect direction of DC voltage when they get charged. And don't let DC voltage pass through the circuit. The next thing is different types of capacitors in terms of their appearance. As you see all of these ones are deep. And these ones are SMD. And they get placed on circuits. Let me show them on a board. Most of these components are deep. You can see their pins on back side of boards and they get soldered there. These capacitors are SMD. And as you see, there are no pins on back of the board.
These are SMD capacitors. There are deep capacitors on this board as well. I'll show you how to change them in the following. Now I'll talk about how to change different types of capacitors.